I mean, it started by learning from Todd that he had for some reason not um, be able to come to the meeting today, so we're going to do the meeting without him. And he said that he, even though he's on the agenda, he said he didn't have anything to report with regard to ordinance discussion. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about other topics related to that, but then save the bulk of it for my Okay, so I'm calling this meeting to order. Everyone has the minutes in front of them. Before we approve minutes, I'm going to accept public comments. We have a member of the public. Would you like to make a brief um, statement to us? Well, I was uh, I was at a meeting the other night. Uh, can, my, can you tell us your name? Oh, my name is Roy C. Martin, 81 Con Street, apartment 529, Northampton, Mass, 01060. Mm -hmm. Mac, right. Thank you. Phone number, 413 No, 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 you're on video, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, being the shade committee, you know, I heard mentioned at the housing authority that they want to put in trees now where they had cut some trees down. And I'm like, wait a minute, they cut them trees down and took them out of there because people felt they were endangering their homes. And then now all of a sudden they want to put more trees in, but what kind of trees? Is it, is it a water tree that sucks the water out of the ground? Like a willow tree, right? You know, willow trees grow huge in, in a very short time. All right, and they do clean up water out of the ground, but then by the time they get grown, all right, you know, they're going into people's sewers and stuff like that. All right, I, I know a little about trees. I used to cut them down. All right, <laughs> so, but anyways, uh, where they want them down there, right? And then, and I'm also wondering about a lot of these trees. I see the young trees, right, which is a good thing, but all up through in the tree belt, along the side of the road in the tree belt. They're putting in trees where they had taken them out before. And these trees, when they reach a certain height, are going to be going underneath the sidewalk and then the same thing's going to happen that they had with the older trees. And so, uh, you know, I would suggest that the tree committee look carefully to see where they're planting the trees, make sure they ain't planting them where it's going to be roots growing underneath the, the sidewalk or roots growing out under the road, making big potholes and stuff, you know, things like that. Um, you know, it's part of the reason they took most of the trees up. I, I felt so sick when I come, you know, Elm Street. I used to come down Elm Street. I was living in New York State and I come down Elm Street and I thought this is the most beautiful place in the world. All the nice trees and everything. Oh my happy the trees are gone. Right? Half the city is gone. Look at the park here. All the big trees, right? The beautiful trees, wide trees, right? You know, I would, you know, right? I mean, many of us would like to have your limb cut off, right? That's the same thing with a tree. All right? You know, trees would bleed to death if they do the wrong thing. So, anyways, right? That's my spiel, right? I would say be very careful about where you plant the trees and how you plant them because if you put them in the wrong spot, going to end up in a few years, right, and a lot of them little trees are put inside of the road, people going along breaking them and stuff like that. You walk around and look, you see a lot of them that broke, a lot of them that bent over and stuff, and people don't have respect for them, you know, right? All right, well, thank you very much for your comment um, mm -hmm. and your astute observations, and I want to assure you, you're welcome to stay. Yeah. We're going to go on with our meeting, but yep. I want to assure you that everything you said, Yeah worth thinking about. Right tree for the right place. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, approval of minutes from the last meeting. Uh, Beth, on page two, I wanted to make a, a clarification um, where it says Lily had tea with Molly Freilisher oh, yeah. at the top. It says Molly is working to get some numbers together. It's really Molly was inquiring about. I wondered about that. She actually okay. isn't. That, that is not her task. Okay. Um, so Molly's inquiring about the amount of force that has been converted. converted. So just that. that
on the back, back page, it, it says uh, Robleson, Maryland, the Excel sheet. I think it was uh, smaller. Yeah, oh. Okay. Where was yeah. that? Page 4. Oh. Oh, back page. Four. Number, number 4 in the middle. Oh. It says Robleson, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, right. Smaller. Yeah. Which you can do. A motion to approve the minutes as amended. I will move that. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Abstain? Aye. Inviting uh, uh, back Molly Freilisher and potentially Rick Harper or Christina Bizanson to that meeting as well, just so we can have a broader conversation. Does anyone have a problem with that? That's great. Okay. I'm going to make a note to myself. Uh, and then the other thing that I want to report is that we are doing another round of American chestnut trees this year. Uh, Steve Jones has kindly um, upped his membership for the American Chestnut Tree Society or Foundation, and um, we're getting the nuts this week or next week. So we'll need another location for at least 10 more trees. They were running out of space. Like, I don't know what to do now. Good. They get big. <laughs> they do get. They're going to get very big and yeah. quickly. Might we have them by Harbor Day? No. No. Okay. Well, I mean, they need to sprout and then be planted. Oh. Yeah. Um. All right. That's it for my chair report. I have a question about that. Is there a question? Is there a possibility we could, um, if we're running out of places to put those, could we add them to the list of possible setback trees that people could request? Um, well, we'll think about it. You know, they are, remember, they're, they're a tree that drops very significant right. rough. But if people nuts. want them, they would be specifically requesting that kind of tree. I would want to have a conversation probably with Steve since he is the kind of gifter of that. Mm -hmm. And then also with the American Chestnut Tree Foundation because the expectation is they be put in public places. Um. So, and I know that we, we make an arrangement. But I would just want to include the people who are in the center okay. of that project. Just kind of yeah. I mean, if they keep, keep coming, we may have to get to that point. Yeah, that's interesting. I just I wonder why. I wonder if it would be worth our while. Well, what kind of member? How many? How many does he get a year? Do you know. It depends on the membership that on he the, has. Price. I I think a. Um, I think. I, I think it costs twelve hundred dollars. 
Yeah, I think three hundred three hundred dollars um, gets you three yeah. months, and then as you it's incrementally increase, it, it, it oh, increases. Yeah. So I'm a member, but I'm at the lower end, so right. I don't get any. You don't get any nuts. No, yeah. I got enough stuff to do around here. Right. I, <laughs> yeah. I, would, I would feel really bad if I tried to grow. I mean, I yeah. killed the plant that was on my desk. I mean, how bad is that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but uh, it would be interesting to see if we get if what would be if, uh, if they would entertain us having a membership. The city. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I don't know what I'd have to yeah. figure out what benefit okay. it would be to us, but. We've been fortunate that scheme is we have yeah. a benefactor yeah. who has been donating the nuts. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I, I honestly don't think we, we will exhaust for a long time this possible public space that's where we can put them. No, I'm just, I mean, I'm just, just no. All right, so that's it for me. So um, I'm just trying to look at the agenda. So I ha I brought some I brought some literature and I don't know when do you want to discuss this? Um I, I was to so the it's related to well it's kind of related to a little bit of everything because it's kind of basically it's advertising. So why don't you use your time now? If, you, okay. if, this, is, if this is what you want to report, go for it. So on the your in your packet you're gonna see that there is like a card. Can borrow this for a second, Sue? Yeah. So this is what they call uh, in a uh, every door direct mailer, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you've probably all seen. It usually comes once a year. Mm -hmm. It's carried in the postman's bag or the post, post person's bag, I should say, um, and they actually will deliver this. So we've always, you know, we've been talking a lot about, and I think uh, the last meeting Lily was talking about the time frame for the, uh, the actual press release. So it started to make me think about, well, you know, I said maybe we need to get in front of a press release because the press releases are great, but I think we need to have some other advertising medium of some sort. And we're trying to target individual homes to, to talk to them about our setback planting program. So then um, I asked Donna, I had a conversation with her about uh, putting these types of trifold documents in the utility bills, and she prefers that they do not go in the utility bills. They're supposed to be just bills, not advertisement. So she showed me, I don't live in Northampton, so I don't get this, so I, she showed this to me, and um, I thought that it would be a great way for us to actually send out once a year in the spring to actually tell people a little bit about us, what we do, um, what events we have this upcoming year, how to volunteer for Tree Northampton. And so what I did is I worked with Alicia to actually put, so this other large document that you have, it's two-sided. Um, this is a rough draft of what we would put on this card that would go to everyone's home. And to, mail, to do this work, actually what happens is that we, so if someone does the graphic design, we take this and it goes to Paradise Copies. Paradise Copies makes this and they actually work with the post office to get it mailed. It's about $2,300 to do all this. And Donna's willing to work with us to get it done because she thinks it's a really, it's a great idea. So I had Alicia kind of put, we just kind of threw things together so you could kind of get a sense of what I was thinking about putting on here. Um, it also en encapsulates or captures this setback planting brochure, this trifold brochure that we've put together. Because in order to push the setback planting program, um, it's, it's a lot easier to have one document that kind of explains it all instead of actually having yeah. myself, Alicia, one of you go and try to explain the setback. Not that we couldn't do it, but you want to make sure that your message is consistent. Um, so that would be also incorporated in this, bless you, in this, you know, this would be a standalone document that we would utilize. We would just take a handful, we can have one on the table for Arbor Day. Every time I go and meet with a resident, we can give them this document. Um, the species that are on there, the, they will change based upon what our availability is. So this document doesn't go in the mail? This, no. This is so this mail. and this would look like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this would actually talk about everything that we're going to do for the whole year. So when I'm doing tree plantings and somebody comes up and say, hey, you know, I can have these in my truck. That's say, correct. Oh, here you yes. Go. This would actually go out and be mailed to every, yeah. every household who would not go to businesses. It would just go to residences. Mm -hmm. 
and basically outline them what we actually are really doing, when we're doing it, how to volunteer, how to join. Uh, there also will be on here uh, for the setback. So what we're going to do with the setback planting is that right now when people want setback plantings, they're either emailing me directly or they're emailing Tree Northampton. Um, we're going to put a form together and put a link on there that actually sends people right to a, um, a form, sort of like the neighborhood planting um, uh, application. So it just populates their information, um, and then they'll just be backed up on that Excel spreadsheet somewhere that will save. So I don't have to constantly. Kind of, it's going to save a bunch of work. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to bring this to your attention because I think we can we can pull this off before Arbor Day if you think it's a good idea, and if you, and I, I had Alicia whip this up because I wanted you to see this, just some of the stuff we were thinking about, but I, I'm looking for input because we can put more information on the back. So if you wanted to add something, change something. It would be in this shape, this style? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. All right, so you're welcoming feedback from any of us about content, yep. and is that true for this too? You, yes, I mean, I, I, we've worked on this quite a bit, uh -huh. um, okay. but actually, this this may end up this may end up changing a little bit because if we if we do set up that um, interface, we'll have to actually put that information on here so people can actually when they get this they can just send that you know click, click that link and it'll populate that form for me yeah. so I don't have to deal with it until I actually make meetings to, and I make a time to go meet with these folks. So, you know the thing. The thing about this is, this is. I think it's a good way to get our message out, but it also can be a little dangerous because we may have a lot of people asking for a lot of things, and we have to be able to support to support that. So, trying to streamline the process is going to be um, probably the best thing to do. I think. So, setting up the form is a good thing. The other issue we're going to have is nursery stock. So we have. Uh, enough nursery stock to get us started for Arbor Day and enough nursery stock to take us basically through the spring planting. And I reserved about twelve, about $2,800 on the side to actually purchase ad hoc, ad hoc trees. Are you late? Yes. Hi, come on in. Feel so, free to pull up a chair. But, you know, it takes time to visit with people. It takes time to site the tree. It takes time to get the right have the trees available so some of these folks will be getting trees until the fall. Um, I noticed, Rich, that there's no more expectation of folks to water trees. And one of the reasons why I liked that was that I felt that it created a self-selection of people who were autumn already in the mindset of caring for the tree. Even, even if we don't necessarily hold them to that, it's going to self-select people who are not just takers but who were also caretakers. Gotcha. So um, I, I encourage putting that language back in because I think it'll help to reduce maybe some of the numbers a little bit. Okay. Um, not so much to reduce it, that's not really the goal, but to get people who, who are going to be good homes to that tree. Okay. Right. And you can feel free to send me emails okay. about it. Got it. Anything else? <clears throat> Anybody have any? The only suggestion I have is just layout um if you make this in half to fit on that size this is going to be really tiny unless you turn it yeah so that that's just that's just a draft yeah for us okay. to get it you know and this actually i don't think all right now i did something with the cards right here there. so this is there is no so if we wanted to do an eight and a half by eleven card oh if it doesn't cost any more, to be truthful with you. Oh, even mailing it wouldn't cost more? The mailing doesn't cost any more. It's just going to cost more because we're actually just using larger paper, but not, not by you, much. To mail it, you have to fold it in half and put it up Nope. The, the other you carrier, can mail the, it like that? The letter carrier just has these in his oh, in his or her bag. And they I know, just, but 8 half by 11? Yep. Oh, but, so I kind of like this size. But yeah. I think this size actually works because I think people will be more inclined to actually stick this to the refrigerator, yeah, and I think that's what... Um, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, reuse North Hampton and what our solid waste division has done. I think I like that too. I just think on the back, we just got to turn this mm -hmm. so that yep. way. Which the dates are yeah. um, over early. You know that. You. No, I haven't. I didn't. Okay, yeah, she has the 19th and 20th, but it's actually the 26th and the 27th. Oh, well, that would be really great, huh? <laughs> <laughs> she and I just talked about that today, and I read right through it, and I, I didn't change the dates, but I changed the times. 
make the times are right, okay. At 7 a.m. You know what, I just, I encourage everyone to take a really close look at this because it's going to 28,000 people. <laughs> no, um, so good. let's all do our due diligence <laughs> and give it a close look and send comments directly to Rich. It's the same day as the Art Day is you know, Spring Recycling Rally Day. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's last year. No, that's last year. So this card, don't pay attention to this card. This is last year's. I just okay. brought it as a sample. Okay. They haven't, they haven't manufactured their, they haven't printed the new one yet. So we're gonna do 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the Friday. Yep. And it should be 8 to noon. 8 a.m. to noon. Unless you want to make it 8 to 3, I don't care. It's it's to you. 9 to 3 Saturday. You have mail all night on Friday. That and content and information and. Uh, well, you just send me an email. Okay. Alicia has all this. All right. So that's everybody's to do list. What's that? Is to um, find to come through the documents. Saturday. Saturday. It's probably Donald's. I think this document looks like a change. What's up? This is going to be edited. It is going to get multiple times, but I, I just wanted to bring it to the table to show folks the content mm -hmm. of what we were trying to put in there. Yeah. Um, I find this to be very handy on the backside with the dates because it gives people a sense of, oh yeah, I'm going to be around at that date. Totally. No, I'm yeah. not. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is I wanted to put a plug in because I really want to see if we can capture more volunteers. Mm -hmm. Although I know we have a lot of volunteers, we're, we're always going to need more mm -hmm. we need to, and people will be recycled. Since I gave them my copy to you, Yeah. Thank you. And the other thing too. This one? No, this? not that. Thank you. Yep. Alright. Anything else in the uh, tree warden report? Uh, no. No, I'm just trying to see if we have the... Uh, we can talk about the tree order afterwards at some point. Yeah, we'll cover that so much. No, that's okay. it. And the grant thing is still on hold. Like any, it's not. I haven't heard a word. It hasn't been awarded. It ha we have not been told yay or nay. Uh -huh. So I don't. I have. I don't know anything. Yeah. That's it. That's it for you. Okay. Well, we'll get started a little early then. Good thing I got here without a traffic. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> tell us how you pronounce your last name. Pulia. Pulia. Okay. Tree commission. Lee Pouliot, welcome. Thank I'm you. Lily, by the way. Nice to meet you in person. Lot, and this is yeah, Jen. I'm Jen. I was saying you were, Nice to meet you. Yeah, you. Well, good contact. afternoon, everybody. Yes, well, um, thank you for coming. You know, uh, uh, we were just referencing that we uh, submitted a grant application to DCR okay. so through the Urban Forestry Program. Mm -hmm. um, and part of it is, is um, pulling up some hardscape in um, in one of our parking lots, our downtown parking lots, that you know is exposed to a lot of full sun, and planting trees where um, where there's just very poor quality soil. So we wanted to use this opportunity to explore structural soil and plant properly in an urban environment. And Jen mentioned that you had some experience with that. So if you'd like a to little through, <laughs> and, and I can tell you that um, Molly Fr Freilicher. Uh, Preferred me to you. Oh, sure. I took okay. the street to tree steward training, and she was like, "I think." Yeah. Uh -huh. so, and Lee, feel feel free to just start by zooming out and giving us a broad picture of what you do and how. I think that'll be a helpful place to start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I am the planning director for the city of Chicopee, um, but my background is in landscape architecture. I did my master's in landscape architecture at Cornell uh, University. It's the Molly mm -hmm. connection. Mm -hmm. um, I was a TA, uh, a teaching assistant, uh, under Nina Basic and Peter Trowbridge. Uh, Nina is kind of the urban tree guru. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows Nina's name. Um, her husband, Peter, uh, when I was at uh, Cornell, was the chair of the landscape architecture department. They co-taught our urban plant classes, so I TA for the both of them. So there's a very strong connection between plant science and landscape architecture while I was there, and they were co-teaching that course. So a lot of the work uh, and the projects that I saw with Nina out in uh, Ithaca were projects where she may have used CU structural soil since she uh, developed it. Um, in my capacity with Chicopee, I work very closely with our tree warden, uh, Chris Scott. Uh, we do an annual volunteer tree planting event every fall um, where we purchase uh, bare root tree stock um, and then have a volunteer community planting day. 
uh, versus trying to have uh, bear, uh, bald and burlap trees brought in and planted by a contractor. It's a way that we get neighborhoods and communities involved in the planting, um, and there's been great stewardship. Uh, I'm sure you all remember the October snowstorm. Um, we saw a significant number of trees come down for no reason after that storm, just for fear of trees. Mm -hmm. um, so this volunteer program has really helped us to explain to our community um, that street trees are safe, that they're going to be taken care of, um, that we don't need to clear cut the city of Chicopee because we had a really bad October snowstorm. Mm -hmm. um, and in addition to that, we worked very closely with Chris and his team. Uh, we applied to the same DCR grant program to do our urban street tree inventory and GIS data. Uh, we have an urban forestry management plan that came out of that program as well, and we're doing our best to follow and implement what was requested and suggested uh, in that plan. When so, did you get your inventory done? Inventory was done in 2012. Uh, so it's, we're probably right around the time where I'm gonna wanna do an update on it. Uh, but Chris and his team have been very good about updating. Uh, they're using TreeKeeper, um, and they've been very good about updating the maintenance um, efforts and some of our planting projects that we've completed to date within that system. Uh, we also, with our inventory, uh, we're only able to inventory two of our parks. Uh, so with an update, we're probably going to look to finish inventory in the remainder of our public parks so we know what we have going on in those spaces as well. So that's my background. I'm a planner, uh -huh, but uh -huh. well, I'm a landscape architect. I train in moon lighting as a planner, so I tell most people. <laughs> I still like to get out of the office and get my hands in the dirt, though. Mm -hmm. Um, so my experiences uh, with structural soil are really seeing projects that Nina had completed with Ithaca um, in the very context that you were just mentioning, which is parking lots. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, the way that I was taught about CU structural soil is that it's, it's more so a technique to use when you can't get the soil volume in an open pit or an open lawn area to support a shade tree. Um, if you, uh, what's great about this program, just flipping through your brochure of your setback tree planting program, if you have those setbacks and people are willing to let you do that and you have a very narrow tree lawn, that's a better bet. But if you need to create the space for roots to grow, this is, this is a system to look at. So you could have very narrow um, islands in a parking lot and have that structural soil sort of continue invisibly underneath the curb for that island into the pavement area it's not visible, but the tree roots are able to grow in that and establish themselves. Um, we visited a number of Nina's projects uh, and Ithaca's projects uh, at different time frames from installation to a few years out while I was there to see how the species were doing. Um, I brought some books with me because this forced me to go look through my stuff. Um, uh, the Urban Horticulture Institute uh, and Nina's team used to publish this and update it every so many years. It's now just an online document which you can download. Um, and one of the sections in the back um, is uh, dealing with uh, uh, her testing of tree species that are compatible with structural soil based on uh, pH and, and all that sort of thing. So this list might be a little dated, but there's probably about 40 species on here that seem to handle those conditions very well. Um, so I reference back to the Horticulture Institute's website on a pretty regular basis to see uh, what's going on. What was drilled into us as students under Nina about CU structural soil is that the most critical component of utilizing it is that you work with a contractor who is licensed to do the mix and has experience doing the mix appropriately. The goal of the structural soil system is to create voids which is where the roots grow, which reduces the potential for um, heaving, um, especially if you're doing this under pavements. And if the mix is not right, um, that is not going to work. <laughs> um, so I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, um, CU's structural soil is a trademarked system, and I believe that contractors need to be licensed in its creation. Um, I think that there are other structural soil systems out there, so that's a sort of a procurement question. Um, but if you're looking specifically for the CU system, you want someone who's licensed and has the experience in creating it. So, um, have you used it in Chicopee? We have not used it yet. 
Um, we do have some situations where it will apply. Um, I'm looking specifically in our downtown area, Chicopee Center. Um, we're contemplating some some large scale streetscape work um, for a lot of our downtown area, and a lot of our downtown area just simply doesn't. We don't have a lot of right of way um, to work with. Um, none in some cases. Everything's paved um, from building to street. Um, so those are the places where I think we will be using it. Um, I haven't pushed it because our inventory said that 65% of our urban forest was empty, so I've been going after the easy to fill spaces first, uh, which has been where we have lots of very wide tree lawns in some of our neighborhoods, uh, our more suburban neighborhoods. Uh, so we haven't used it yet, but it's something that our tree warden knows about um, and that when the time is right, we'll look to include that in our streetscape designs. And you look to see if there's any uh, licensed contractors regionally? I believe that there's a list um, from the Horticulture Institute that does have that. I don't know if it's been updated. Um, I haven't particularly looked, but I, there were some that were listed in Massachusetts the last time I was really looking into this. Um, so from a Massachusetts standpoint, you should be able to find somebody to work with. A couple of years ago, they were, there was one in, uh, so it's an F, in it, a little bit farther east. Uh, Framingham? Yeah, Framingham. Yeah. yeah. Ameret is the, is the license holder. So A, M, E, R, or Q, something, something like that. Okay. Yeah, I think there might be some communities in the eastern portion of the state that have utilized the system. Um, I'm not aware of anyone here that has, yeah. at least in our region. Originally, in the plans for um, the redo of the Lord Jeffrey Inn, mm -hmm. they had some in the plans, um, some of the curve bump outs, but I don't know if in the end it, it actually it happened. I, I, I don't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another area that um, I'm sure it's on the Horticulture Institute's website is looking at using structural soil with porous asphalt systems. So, um, there was a sort of test project of that in Ithaca that was very recent when I was finishing my degree there. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like that is a potential viable yeah. option as well. Rich, is that planned a combination of a porous cover over the, uh, where, you know, the islands that are currently? Mm -hmm. so, you know, That's what they do in front of Cumberland Farms. Yeah. There's, there's a, uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's actual CU soil, but it's supposedly structural soil. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure exactly where it came from, but I did see it being installed, and they actually planted the American elms in there, and they used the port. It's called porous pave. That product that they use. There's mm -hmm. as many other companies. Okay, where? Cumberland Farms in Florence. Oh. oh. Well, there is no, there is no, uh, there's no soil in sight there anywhere. So. Wait. Uh, clarification of the use. So if you have a tree pit mm -hmm. and you dig out the tree pit and you just add structural soil to the tree pit, mm -hmm. that is not really the full use of structural soil. No. That is not the correct use. You no. have to take the adjoining soil kind of part of the scape out. Put, mm -hmm. So if we have a parking lot with an island in it, Digging out the island and putting structural soil in the island is not what structural soil is designed for. It depends on the size of the island. Mm -hmm. I don't think it depends on the size of the island. I think it's just not the use for structural soil. It's not how it's used. Well, it's, 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 it's not a useful way It's called used. structural soil because the intent is that you need to compact it to put something else on top of it. So if you're just looking at redoing a large island, no, this is not what you need. But if your island is small, and you know that you don't have the soil volume to support the tree that you want to put there, you need to expand your soil volume. So that's where you expand the structural soil outside of that right. island, underneath the pavement. Exactly. You can still get the, the compaction you need to support pavement, right. and then the tree still has the voice to be able to grow its roots into that area. Exactly. So I'm just clar clarifying that it is that you, the whole point is to get the roots to go some distance, mm -hmm. and that distance is created with structural soil. Correct. In particular, if you have a tree belt or tree pit, 
and you have a sidewalk, and then there's root volume, root soil volume adjacent. If you pull the sidewalk, put it under the sidewalk. You can create that connection. Half that connection. Correct. So it's really about connecting the soil that would otherwise not be available. Yes. That's the, that's the key. That's sort of a secondary use, uh, or an, another pathway to using it. If you have right. a situation where you can get to native soil that right. is not too compacted, um, yeah. because if it's too compacted, the roots aren't going to grow there anyways, yeah. um, then you create that pathway. Right. Or if you have a situation where you just have sidewalk and building facade, then your root zone becomes everything underneath the sidewalk right. um, for okay. whatever area you define. So you lift that sidewalk up. Yep. Dig it out a fairly substantial area. Yep. Put in two feet deep or three feet deep, depending on the, and someone would help us figure that out. And, and then we would put the sidewalk back on top. Correct. Right, so it's really a, something that's integrated with hardscape. It is, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, so I, I, I'd, I'd love to understand that a little better because, so in the case of these islands, these are fairly large islands and they're currently mostly paved islands, like they have concrete on top, right? right. They're mostly paved, yes. So, in other words, if we were to pull up most of that island, put structural soil and tree in it, are you saying, Rob, then that you're that it would be part of the system to system to cover that with a perm impermeable, yeah, or or could, could you also cover that with a permeable well, surface? I I guess that's a that's really a design question. If if your islands are large enough to support whatever trees you're putting in there, and you're just talking about a situation where you have really poor soils, but you have volume, you have soil volume then you don't necessarily need to put structural soil in them unless you need to drive over the islands. You can just replace them, I would just replace them with a, a good soil if, that, you, have, if you have a volume. Kind of but if, you're, if your islands are really small and you know you don't have needed soil volume to support a shade tree because yeah. you want to get shade on that parking lot, uh -huh. then you would use the structural soil to extend underneath your paved That's area Regardless of whether or not you were going to put some sort of surface over the island itself. Okay. Okay. Um, it's clear. Thank and the applications I've seen, the islands where the trees are planted are left open and they're mulched. Mm -hmm. And then you, you don't see the structural soil, it's underground. Yeah. Okay. So generally, for a potentially large shade tree, how much area does that require? And if I understand correctly, you have to take up all the pavement in that entire area. That you would replace, and you would replace that, that underground soil and, and that you want, yeah. So the way we did it when I was a student, um, we had a, a, Nina had a very rudimentary formula that you used to calculate, I want a tree this size, and it gave you an approximate soil volume that you needed. It's been a few years, so I don't remember right. it off the top of the my head. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Northampton actually published that nice book that Alicia put together. The, in, there are soil volume indicators in that oh. for each tree. Yeah, you, you referred to that when we completed our yeah. application. Yeah, yeah, it gives you an idea because yeah. um, it's not just the size of the crown of the tree, it's, it's a little more complicated. So yeah, they, it's, it's water capacity yeah. and all of that. Yeah. There's a ballpark in here though, I know there is. Do you have our book? Uh, it's like you measure the DBH of the tree. Right. Like, uh, you mean at maturity, at full maturity? Uh, oh, oh no, you measure the um, yeah the mature the mature crown size. Here it is. It's uh, so the recommendation is at least minimum two feet deep, better three feet deep. And uh, I, I teach about this all the time. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, Two cubic feet of soil is needed for every square foot of crown projection. So that's the crown projection is the anticipated area under the drip line of the tree at maturity. So if you have a tree that theoretically is 30 feet, the crown is supposed to spread 30 feet. So you just figure out, you know, the area of a circle mm -hmm. with the radius of 15 feet, and um, that will okay. give you the number of yards that you need to have. And Rich, remind me when we when we did a um, our budget for this, were we were we considering an actual licensed seed soil contractor to supply it, not to install it? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. 
think so that's usually how it works is you have someone who just you know, makes so things apply to the re, re, So okay. Reed Custom Soils is now the closest uh, actual manufacturer or supplier of the seed soil. Okay. So if we get the grant, <laughs> and that's big if, um, we, uh, one of the things that we pitched to DCR is that we wanted to turn this into a learning opportunity for tree professionals. Mm -hmm. So if we get it and we find out if, if, that we are going to carry out that project, we would be delighted to invite you back or I anyone, would love your, to tree, back. your tree warden and yes, everyone. Absolutely. We'll kind of figure it out together. <laughs> the other problem is, I have is yeah, you need to figure something out because I think it's, it's a really poor um, demonstration, I think, because we're talking about actually not expanding underneath the pavement. We don't have any money to tear the pavement, or maybe we do. Well, that's not, so that's a good point. But yeah. The other project is, is that whole area over there, which is the old Mill River bed, has uh -huh. been identified as possibly to have some other stormwater mitigation work done to it. Okay. So I think the project is going to work hand in hand with uh, one of those, uh, the MVP projects that mm -hmm. Wayne has been working on, there's mm -hmm. 10 of them. Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of see where that kind of all pans out. Is that part of the DCR? No, it's not. No, it's, it's total, bigger. Total, it's bigger, it's the... Oh, right, I remember it's now. It's the governor's yeah. municipal, municipal vulnerability. vulnerability. Yeah. So if that happens, that could really be an opportunity. Just tearing up the black, some of the black rock would be a great opportunity. Uh, and we'd be able to get bigger trees than that. Because right mm -hmm. now, I mean, what's spec for is a very small tree. Mm -hmm. Defeats the, purpose. defeats the purpose. We want to get shade on that right. very hot island. And that's why it's just like if we don't can't tear up stuff, it, yeah. it comes up a little bit of an odd demonstration project because it's like yeah. some, showing people something very <laughs> kind of like we almost could get a big shade here, but we couldn't actually do it. You know, because the soil volumes aren't really big enough mm -hmm. to, in the islands, which are they're, they're like six or eight feet wide and twenty feet long. So we can get the whole medium sized trees. Can I just clarify something? Sure. Rich was asking or saying that um, we will, the budget includes people to mix the soil, the licensed people, but not to actually install it. But you were and you said that's how it usually happens. Well, your con, you, whoever's your contractor would basically they they're going to purchase the material from the licensed make producer. But did you say it's important to have the licensed person actually install it? Mm -hmm. No, oh. I don't think it happens that way. Because once it's mi the, the critical piece is that it's mixed properly. So oh. there'll be there'll be a check before it leaves the yard to make sure that it, it meets spec. Oh. Um, and then it's just like bringing in gravel or or a soil or backfill or anything else, and then your contractor can compact it just like they okay. would any other base material. I've heard you then. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So then even if it's just, you feel like if it's only pedestrian access, like let's say you had this big enough island, we don't, but let's say, you, I just want to clarify this in my head, you had a big enough island to support one large state tree, for example, and you were only going to leave it open, so it's a raised part of one island, you're only going to leave open the traditional whole pit hole, four yeah. by four or three by three, whatever and uh, the rest of it would have sidewalk on it. In that case, because you're compacting it for sidewalk, it would be an appropriate yes. use as long as there was soil volume to support the tree. Correct. So in that case, you know, if you left the native soil where you're gonna put the sidewalk panels, you're gonna compact it right. to support the sidewalk. Right. Um, but then by compacting it, you're making it not accessible to the tree roots. Right. So in that case, it might be a more appropriate mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm application of this technology because mm -hmm. otherwise you're just limiting the tree to that little tiny square and have you ever worked with um people yeah i met with another um <coughs> landscape architect and uh she said uh near boston they're using sand based structural soils i have not we i'm just curious yeah, if i don't have any experience with that i know after i graduated other entities have been coming up with similar systems mm -hmm. um, but I mean, there was nothing else at my point mm -hmm. in my academic career that was comparable to this. Right. Um, some other things have come on since then. Um, so I think the CU structural soil mix also includes um, some sort of 
I'm going to call it hydrogel for lack of better terms, that retains moisture for the tree because otherwise this is basically rocks and a little bit of soil. That's what it boils down to. So there's a particular formula for that as well. I don't know what any other mixes might get into. Okay, sorry if you already mentioned this. Have, have you used any structural soil yet? We have not Check yet. If you know, but no, not yet. You have hands too? Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We like to use it in our downtown. Downtown, okay. Yeah. Um, we're, well, when, when we get the schedule from uh, the sewer department, <laughs> um, we know that we're going to be doing some sewer separation work in our downtown. And our plan is that if we're ripping up all those streets to do full depth reconstruction, we're going to put the streetscapes back the way we want them to be versus how they are now. Um, so that's going to be having street designs and new trees and lighting and everything uh, to pull all this stuff in. And I have a lot of areas where we just have a very narrow right of way. There's no open area outside the sidewalk. It's just sidewalk and build that building facade in. So this is really going to be our only option in some of those streets to get some shade. Uh, in a perfect world, certainly we'd all prefer to have like a big redo where we do this all at the same time that other things are done so that it's not so piecemealed. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling it's going to be very inefficient and expensive if we, you know, to, to do piecemeal, especially because, you know, downtown, we love to put trees in downtown, but there's this sort of dangled plan out there somewhere 10 to 15 years in the future of a complete redo and we're like, okay, do we wait an entire childhood to, to do nothing and, or do we plan something and only to have it after 10 or 15 years ripped up? That's been our exact struggle with talking about the CSOs because the CSOs are so disruptive to everything. I mean, it's, we're talking what is CSO? uh, combined sewers, I'm oh, sorry. Okay. So separating those two systems, which is what we need to do in downtown, requires the installation of, of a new sewer pipe and then it, it requires the reconnection of every single structure to that new pipe mm -hmm. um, which means we're ripping up sidewalk we're ripping up roadway putting in all these new connections and chicopee center is one of our oldest neighborhoods so the connections are haphazard they don't really make sense so it'd be just you keep layering on these complexities and it gets more and more and more costly um, the Chicopee has been renegotiating its time frame um, for our consent decree with the EPA. So the timelines keep changing. So we keep asking our same, this, ourselves the same thing. Do we start doing some of these surface streetscape things that we need to do for people? Or do we wait and try to align it with when we're going to do this really big disrupt, disruptive work, which is now looking like it's 15 years in the future? Where are you landing on that debate? Uh, CSOs have been pushed out significantly in downtown, so they're now in the 15 to 20 year time frame out. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we are going to do surface yeah. uh, work yeah. prior to some of that happening. And we're sort of landing there, aren't we? Like, let's just get a man and... We're, we're, yeah, I mean, if we made a decision earlier not to do anything, but then we reversed it because yeah. we have no idea what the time frame is. Yeah. Tree, there's so many Norway maples that are dotted our downtown landscape that are just dying out. Mm -hmm. and to leave the tree tree wells empty is a shame because mm -hmm. what happens in 15 years if the funding is not available? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Different, different mayor, different set of priorities. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, we have to wrap up fairly soon, but Lee, I did want to just um, plant another thought in your head, and that is that we're having discussions lately in our city um, and trying to broaden the conversation out more regionally about the interface with um, our natural gas infrastructure system with trees and the leaks that are, do damage and, and, and kill trees. And um, our city is probably going to be investing in a, um, a detection system so that we are not planting trees where there are active leaks, which we have done in the past. Um, and we might have done this spring had we not had this little presentation where we did a little circle around an area where we were going to um, do some planting and, and detected some gas leaks. So the gas leaks are ubiquitous. Um, we feel like it's, um, it's a, a good investment of resources to find out where they are so that we're not, you know, throwing good money after that. Yeah. Um, and, um, and also hold the gas companies more accountable um, because, you know, uh, we're all riddled with hundreds and hundreds of Springfield, like 500 plus. Yeah. I'm very sensitive to gas because my husband lives in Lawrence. 
Oh, oh boy. Okay. And, oh, boy. Uh, yes, uh, we were out on a run through the neighborhoods that were exploding when that happened. Wow. Uh, so wow. That was, While it was happening? Yeah, yeah. We, oh. we, uh, oh. we had just gotten back from vacation and decided to take a run. We were repacking to leave for a wedding the next morning in Kentucky. And uh, we just had extra time, so we said, let's go for a run. Uh, we ran down the street into North Andover, house fire number one. I said, oh, that's awful. And the wow. fire department was there responding. It was a normal house fire. For, um, oh, and overall, then we knew. 10 minutes later, we ran into another neighborhood and oh. house fire number two. And wow. I said, okay, this is a little odd. Yeah. Yeah. And then 10 minutes later, we came across house fire number three. And I said, okay, this is not Our a coincidence. <laughs> Wow. Um, so yes, uh, yeah. so I'm very sensitive okay. to that. Um, mm -hmm. I know um, in Chicopee, there's a lot of uh, we have a lot of streets where it was past practice that the easiest place to lay gas line was the tree lawn. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, and since Chris has come on board, that has stopped. Where are they putting? Them? They're putting it in the roadway or underneath the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. um, path of least resistance and cheapest was yeah, the tree lawn. Yeah. Um, so we do have some streets that we're stuck with. That, that was done, but uh, since Chris's arrival, we made sure that that doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not even sure that we have a good idea of where we have leaks. Well, um, I think I may have sent you a map. Um, it's an online map put out by a nonprofit organization called Heat MA mm -hmm. um, that shows every municipality, and because it is required by law that the gas, the utility companies um, disclose where the gas leaks are. So they, right now you'll see 2017 data, but they're just about to get upload 2018 data. And so if you um, click on Chicopee, you'll you'll look and find exactly where your leaks are for that year. Um, and then you you know we're in a better position to hold hold the gas companies accountable. Yeah. Anyway, we are probably going to repeat this the presentation we just had by a gas leaks expert here in Northampton. We're going to repeat that in Springfield. Okay. And I'm happy to invite you. To That'd be great. Okay. I'd love to participate. It's H E E T. Okay. I'll reset them. Okay. But I think I think I said if you go back and look one of those yeah, emails, I said yeah. um, Okay. Well, um, thank you so much for taking Excellent. the time to come out to meet us. Absolutely. And uh, welcome um, back down to the Conservation Commission. Okay. Right. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks nice to meet you. You too. Nice to meet yeah. you as thank well. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. to the ordinance, uh, but is waiting for Alan Seawald's input before she unveils them. Okay. And that's all, the only conversation I've had okay. about that particular piece of that puzzle. And this, is this a case where we should see it after Alan or before? Or I, personally think, I personally think we should probably wait till Alan has his say because it's, if we, pointless it's kind of pointless because it will get possibly changed again or something of that nature. Okay. Would be my and this is this is just the temporary stop now. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. And the other piece of the puzzle is the uh, tr it's actually the tree tree impact permit slash trench permit. Todd and I have to meet to kind of go over that language in person and try to do it on the twenty sixth, which I think is next Tuesday. So, so we it's actually kind of it's okay that Todd's not here because we don't have the okay. report. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, I'm going to move us on to the next agenda item. Arbor Day preparations. Do you want to show everybody? We got our tree speak labels. Look at that. Wow. Nice looking. Yep. Pass them around. Yeah. 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 How did these get attached? 
Um, Rich? <laughs> so there's uh, there's two ways that I've seen it seen them done. Um, Smith College uses basically a, a lag bolt. They drill two holes. Uh -huh. just, drill two holes, and they actually just lag them right to the tree, leaving them out about this far mm -hmm. for a, a tree growth. The other thing that I saw that I that I liked a little better and looked a little cleaner and a little more professional was what they had at UMass, which was they used a stainless steel decking screw, and they had a spring. And so they have them out a little farther, and as oh. the tree grows, the spring just gets compressed. Um, and then, you know, the period of time, you obviously check them for a couple, three, four years. And then back you know, back, back yeah. the what about the idea of doing, I don't know if this would be practical, instead of attaching it to the tree, to have it in a little, like, holder with a stake in the ground? It would get, it would get thrown. It would get, People would just try it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Unfortunately, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're beefy. They're nice and yeah, beefy. They are. Um, uh, uh, the other the other part of Madeline's project is a brochure, and right now the last of it was in Karen's um, uh, court. Uh, she pretty. She's pretty backed up. Backed up. Yeah, okay. But she knows it's on her list. And yes. Thank you. All right. Um, and then one question we had, Rich, that didn't get answered is: Is the city prepared to pay for the print? of the brochures. How many brochures? I think I had estimated something like, I don't know, 300 or are they Are they trifle? Could be trifle Yeah, they're trifle, preferably colored. So I mean, can, we, like can we run them on standard 8 and a half by 11 yes. paper stock? Mm -hmm. Then we can just, so we can come to my office and help me fold. Mm -hmm. Just make them right off the cover. You mean print them right off the yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because that's what I was going to do with those. It was just going to, instead of actually sending them to a printer, mm -hmm. I think it would be, it's, you know. Cheaper. Yeah, it's a lot cheaper. It's yeah. just the folding part of it's kind of a. Folding would be. Yeah. The, the, the city doesn't have a folder? We had one, and we got rid of it because we stopped doing our own utility bills. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, let, me, let me find out if uh, Rich my school has one, and maybe I could just take the stack down here. Okay. Right. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll check it, that. You know, it wouldn't be hard for a kid. And that is. No, I, it's, I pulled with all these. Yeah, it really wouldn't but be But it's okay. If you, if, you, if you have uh, the machine and they're willing to do it, I don't, that would be helpful as well. A lot of copy machines will do it. You just have to read the manual and figure it out. I don't know if yeah, yours no, does. No, Maybe we, yours no, doesn't. No, we pay a lot of money for those and they don't fold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Yeah, they have like a mailroom at my job. I, I, I have no idea if they use the language to do it, but... Oh, jeez. I can ask. Okay. There's one other thing um, I wanted to show you all as a, another educational piece that we could do for, um, for Arbor Day, although Arbor Day is jam-packed. Um, but I think I remember telling you that my daughter uh, created a 30-second video as part of a... Uh, League of Women Voters uh, contest for a, for a topic about climate change, and she did it on urban trees. Mm. And um, so the video is done, and I can show it to you, see if I find it. And um, it, it, I mean, I think it's a great educational uh, video. It's very simple, and we could pop it up on the city website or put it on Tree Northampton's website, either or both. So as soon as I find it, I can show it to you. But in the meantime, let's go on to other aspects of Arbor Day preparation. Wait till we show it at Arbor Day, like when we're giving out the tree whips. If we had a place to plug in a computer. And Wi-Fi. Or I guess you wouldn't need Wi-Fi if you downloaded it. Um, How long is it? 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah, that was you want to loop it through. Yeah, let me, um, let, me, let me pull it off. But Marilyn, why don't you go ahead and continue? Okay, on. yeah. Uh, so, in addition to tree speak, we're doing, we talked about doing three other things whips, the letter to the landscapers, and the tree plantings. So, where are we at with whips? They're uh, ordered. Water? Yep. Yeah. They're going to be here probably the week of Arbor Day. Okay. Along with the bare root nursery stock that we've ordered. And how are we doing with volunteers, Sue? I haven't put it out yet, but um, 
I will this week. Okay. Will we know if we have printings and how many people we need for that? So or our, my the reasons? estimation is we're going to take 50, we're going to take delivery of 50 barewood trees, hopefully on the Tuesday before, the Monday or Tuesday before Arbor Day. Okay. So we plant some on Wednesday. We're going to probably plant on Wednesday, and then we'll plant Friday, Saturday. Do you want to plant Thursday? Yeah. To be honest with you, no. No. Probably not because I think we're I'm going to be scrambling to get to support all the other things that we're trying to do. So Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Saturday, Saturday morning, yes. All fifty. Uh, no. Possible. Possible. It is possible, but I don't. Anyone the What? I don't know. Anyone the weather? Well. There's the Sunday group. Oh, yeah. So, right? The other thing, too, is that I have I have not heard from, um, as Mr. Martin okay. talked about, um, I haven't heard from the Housing Authority, so I have to reach out to them. I did email Julie, and Julie, myself, and Rob are going to meet at the Y. She comes back from vacation the first week of April and put stakes out, so we'll actually know exactly what we're going to be able to fit in there, what they're okay with, and then try to craft a setback agreement with them. Um, so, and then we have to, Rob and I are also going to go down and stake out the housing authority just so they can have a visual. I mean, I didn't provide them with a graphic uh, of what, you know, our proposed plantings were, but then Rob and I will go over there and kind of just make it look somewhat official so they can get their eyes on it. So, do you know what time she wants to plan on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday? Uh, Wednesday would be the regular time, which would be 10. Yeah, 9 or 10. We have, well, for pruning, it's has been cold. We can start at 10. So maybe 9? 9. So maybe 9. Yeah, we should switch to 9 o'clock. Yes, definitely. 9 o'clock. Yeah, 9 till noon. noon? 9 to noon would be fine. Friday, 9 to noon? Friday is part of Arbor Day, so we don't have a regular. So we have to think what what fits. I think nine o'clock is nine to noon. Uh, yep. And Saturday nine to noon. Yep. And that that allows if we need support okay. from DPW to get set up mm -hmm. before nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. And and the other thing is is that if we only end up with doing one of the two locations that we've talked about, then we either need to have a backup location. Plant. To get the rest of those in the yeah. ground, yeah. yeah. Because it, one or two, two, these locations may not work out in time. I mean, it, 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 we have, we need almost a week or two before Arbor Day just to get the um, day safe. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, we only have a couple weeks here. We can't hold those. Hopefully, it makes them down. So, the group of seven that you recruited is on which day? Saturday. On the Saturday at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So we all, have seven there. All there. Well, I think we could come earlier if needed. I think we said eight, because you said eight, right? Yeah, let's go we're going to, well, I'm here at seven, but we have to have 6.30, so we have to bring everything down here. But yes, I mean, I think the key is, is that two things, whatever project we have that's going to work, or both, if we have both projects, the KL apartments and the Y, then that's what we're going to be doing. If we have one or the other, then we need to find another. We need to find other places to plant the rest of the trees so we can actually get them all in the ground. It'd be nice to get them in the ground because that'll be five, like five days out since they. So Wednesday we don't to get a bunch of them in the ground. Yep. just to get them going. But, um, so Paul Fair will organize Wednesday, and I guess we need to emphasize with him that we need like an all hands on deck on Wednesday. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, in other words, it's an important day. To yeah, I communicate directly with him. Well, Paul, yeah, yeah, you got to call if we need a big, big, big crew. You know. I don't know how many he can, I'll find out how many can he recruit on his own and then try to combine the recruiting as we've been trying to do. Yeah. Because um, we've ended up with different people recruiting for different days and yeah. trying to pull in everybody to be one group. Um, and I'm pretty sure I can be available both Friday and Saturday. Uh, but wherever you need me to be, you know, whatever you need me to do. For and that brings up an there. issue is, is that Jan will be present, I'll be present, Rich will be present. It'd be good to think of some of the other 
very experienced people in retail. And we will be there on Saturday. Yeah. 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 As well as leaders are always our limitation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, leaders, yeah. leadership yeah. is always our limitation mm -hmm. because you know, we could pull all kinds of groups from different yeah. companies and right. schools well, and things like that. But without the expertise. Uh, if you really needed us to provide knowledge and visual Europe. And knowledge uh, and knowledge of Europe. I've done tree planting before, so. Yeah. yeah. The, the only fly in the ointment for the bare root trees would be if they have some kind of freak weather event in the ointment, mm. meaning snow. Right. Um, and the reschedule. Well, the thing is, is that we have, so that's the other the issue, is that we, we have available nursery stock that we, we own that's in it. We, we have under contract at Amherst Nursery. So we, we can do, we will do planting somewhere, it's just a matter of where. But my hope is, is that we're going to try to tackle pieces of both of this project as they both come through. Or one of them in some other location with the bare root stock to get all on the ground. Keep me abreast of that because um, I will uh, tailor the press release accordingly. Okay. If I need to put in flexible language about where we're going to plan okay. to do that. Yeah, I mean, Rich is right. I mean, we might end up playing more trees when I'm I mean, just the yeah. timing might not be right. Or so, will you have the dig safes? Yeah, so in other words, if we're, we're going to prepare many dig safe sites mm -hmm. between now. Do you hear that, Beth? It is. It's sort of like it is. It's, yeah. This time of year, it's, yeah. and we're you know we're yeah. taking a we're taking a, yeah. Yeah. we're taking a little risk. Taking a little risk by doing the bare root stock, but I after our experience with them last fall, I I feel really confident that they're going to come through just as nice as they did before, and we were able we proved to ourselves we were able to we were able to plant basically thirty five trees in one day. Yeah. So. Pray for not a crazy um, spring like we had, two, was it two springs ago, where it just got so hot? That was, so that was our first spring. Yeah, that, yeah, and that we, was, lost, we lost some We lost a lot that of those trees. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the quality of those wasn't nearly what these were. No, there was, the, yeah. the, there was very little uh, fibrous roots. They were all structural. So. I don't think I've planted bare root trees yet. Yeah, I think I've only planted those yeah, you want to all at once. Do people want to see this? Yes. Sure. Sure. Okay. Hey. You might have to come closer for the volume. Uh, uh, don't blink because it's over in 30 seconds. <laughs> Ricky Bark will be so startled that he's going to be doing it. creating harsh numbers in Massachusetts, but relying on energy-hungry air conditioning to cool us only increases heat trapping emissions. Urban shade trees are a natural defense. In 2007, the city of Worcester removed 28,000 trees to contain the infestation of the Asian longhorn beetle. Over the next two summers, the denuded city used 37% more electricity to cool its buildings. Plant wow. trees on the east and west sides of buildings to block sun and lower humidity. This reduces your electricity bill and protects our climate. Wow. Great. Wow. Did she make you all those drawings? Yeah, that's very cool. Yes, yeah, that's really good. Oh. Was it for? Well, they don't have in Massachusetts. Oh. It was just um, identify a climate change problem and suggest a solution. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Okay, anything um, else on whips or plantings before? Uh, so, the, yeah. what, what time are the whips being distributed? Oh, that's the time that we already discussed. Um, it's on the. It's 8 a.m. Oh, it's a three. Nine to three on oh. Friday, eight to noon on Saturday. So we have to, at the same time as the tree plantings. Yes. So we have to divvy up who's going to do what. You know, our, our. That's what. But volunteers are going to meet me, me, or me, me Who's going to mainly do what? Oh, volunteers are mainly going to do the whips. Yeah. Volunteers going to do everything. So. The well, whips is besides us. It's basically anybody, regardless of their strength, pretty much. I mean, as long as they can stand, they can do the whips. You're going to be a planting. Who's going to do what? So, yeah, I'll recruit and I'll look after. And Alicia has okay. helped me in the past, like be there to talk to right. the volunteers and right. be backup for the volunteers at City Hall. Somebody has to kind of be mm -hmm. in charge of that. But mm -hmm. we are better used for the planting. Yeah. I think so. Yes. 
Gotcha. What is Susan's last name? Susan Mariah. Yeah, Susan Mariah. Mm -hmm. right. Will she be doing some of the work? Um, I remember hopefully she will be. Her husband's been sick, so we'll see. But um, we'll have repeat people who've done it before. Um, we had great people last year. Yeah. It was 50 it, degrees it would, and raining, and would be Lindsay Sabatos was out there. She was. Oh, she right. was very good. Oh my goodness, she did work she so awesome. hard. <laughs> Just running around giving people their whips. And wow. Yeah, we, we, didn't really have, we didn't have very many left. Do we have a photo yeah. for him? I don't think so. Uh, oh, the flight, the actual uh, hard copies of the documentation to go with each whip. Who's going to produce that? Am I going to print? Oh, the one with the pages? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to print those out. Because I ended up making 100 for each one. If possible, that'd be helpful. Right. Have them available. Right. Nice. Did we get any responses on the. Um, Post no. Not that I'm aware of. I didn't hear anything from anyone. Um, all the principals emailed me back, and but they all said, I think I said this last minute again. They said it was too late, and I put back, well, how do we go about this? And then I didn't get a reply really for how to prepare for the next year. So I marked my calendar a couple months early, like January, start reaching out to them and saying, as soon as so that as soon as the, the DCR announces the contest, mm -hmm. got to push on it because I think it's really important that you know, this is an established program and we're not anticipating. And, mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's actually a fun program. It's a great yeah. Program. It's just way past participation, but not recently. Yeah. 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 Um, Can you circle back just what's I got to the start time. Yeah. yeah. On those right. It was Wednesday and then Saturday and Sunday. Did we, did we come up with a, a definite start time? Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, 9 yeah. to 12. 9 to 12. Yeah. Because I want to be able but to email someone, everybody every day. We need your help planting right. and giving out lists. But then someone said I could be there at 8, but that's, we're not doing it. Uh, Lily was saying she preferred that Saturday was 8 a.m. rather right, than so 9. I'm wondering, I, that was clarification. I was right. just following Richard's yeah. request. Yeah. Right, that might be a good idea. I think because because Saturday's a half a day, and I have to be cognizant of the fact that I have will have staff here as well. Yeah. And if we're going to get all these things planted, then I'm going to need the assistance from DPW staff to provide water and locations where there is no water because this time of year outside spigots are shut off basically. So I just want to be cognizant of using the over time wisely. So last year we started earlier down at Con Street. Okay. We started at eight we last did. year. We did. Yeah. And everything was like delivered there the day before. Yeah. The bare root uh, trees we may, depending upon where they are, may deliver them and just hide them somewhere. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, again, it's all based upon what project we get. So my envision is to hand out the whips on Friday, do one project, and then Saturday morning do the other project. Mm -hmm. So we're not doing two projects mm -hmm. in one day. We're all focused in one place with those volunteers, mm -hmm. and then the next set of volunteers. Mm -hmm was on on Saturday to the other locations. So, so can we then decide to start at 8? Is that a good idea? On Saturday? On Saturday. Yes, I think Saturday would be beneficial for 8. 9 o'clock is fine on. On Wednesday and Friday? Yes. So I'm going to broadcast these out to lots of people. We'll use That's our fine. Facebook, we'll use yep. um, messaging software and get it out to people. Okay. No, Great. I'm saying. Sorry. Sorry. Oh. Okay, and lastly, um, I'm sorry I haven't redrafted the landscape letter, but I will do that with Rich and get that done in the next week. Okay, that's fine. And then I'll just, once uh, once we get it all put together, do, does the commission want to review that letter before it goes out? Or we can review it maybe by the next meeting, which is the first. Is it going to be April different 30? from last year? Not much. Maybe just send it to us. Okay. Okay. And, um, oh, and we were going to look all look over Should the list to, to see Correct. if we can right. add anyone to the list. You had a list, you're going to make it into a Google Doc. Yeah, Rich sent that, and um, oh, great. So why don't I just post both on Google Docs? People can review them and send us a link. That would be great. Thank you. So, Treehorn Hamptons. Oh, I, 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 one comment that Rich and I are going up to Plainfield. Oh, and um, oh. he, just a really brief 
recently had an interesting phenomenon, which is a lot of the knowledge that we have had in our campus to start this program has come from the east and moved to the west, you know, including Cambridge, but also back to the suburbs of Boston. And I do think that Rich is kind of leading the way, bringing it, and I'm going too I'm on these, and I'm volunteering actually to plant trees. Can you make it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, both oh, are. Right. Going yeah. west. Sunday. And so I think the interconnectivity of one town to the next mm -hmm. is incredibly important, even though we have the internet where we can read everything. Actually, having some personal contact mm -hmm. and, and also on the ground demonstration and, and working together seems to be a very good thing mm -hmm. um, and it does as a volunteer kind of broaden the world a little bit mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. for me cool. personally which I think is good also it's part of the sort of infinite-ness uh, of what there is to do mm -hmm. which is a little bit distressing <laughs> <laughs> and there's so much I mean you can just there's just infinite riches Firm, but there's a, always more, mm -hmm. more, to more to do, you know, yeah, within this, this bounds of Northampton, but even as we well, need I think just as a, as, a, as a greater communal whole, I mean, I think it, no, I think it is that Alan Snow said it was very intentional um, when he became the tree warden of Amherst with his DCR roots of community forestry, it was very intentional for that to catch fire and come across the river. Yeah. So I think it's our, at least it's my due diligence to actually continue that and continue to move in that direction mm -hmm. um, and try to connect the dots and try to get the rest of the western. There's a lot of communities in the far western part of the state that actually have tree programs. I mean, that's where Jay is working, right? Right. So, but yeah. they, but to to get to there, to get to Pittsfield, you have to go through a lot of communities. So. I think it's kind of important to make those connections, and that's why I've gone to Plainfield, and um, I've been treaded very lightly because I don't want to be looked as the, the tree warden from the big city that has all the nice shiny tools and a nice commission and blah, blah, blah. But I mean, I think that they are starting out um, like, 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 like we did, you know, like, like Lily did in the beginning, you know, when, you know, after this, the citizen volunteers said, okay, enough is enough, you know, we, we, we want to do something for our community and this is what we want. And people are doing the same thing and I'm, I'm excited to kind of lend support to them in any way that I can um, as a tree warden but also just as an arborist. Yeah. We do have people volunteering from the cities coming here too, including one from the West. Right. North Adams. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I contacted yeah. him recently. Yeah. Um, is it Matthew Bibi? And um, I contacted him about, you know, what are your plans and his planting dates are Arbor Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, ah, his first yeah, one. Well, we're come so I, I copied Red Rob on them, yeah. and um, we'll figure it out somehow to get out there and, and help him. Right, he I came offered, out and helped us. Yeah, because yeah, I had offered to go, but I mean, Arbor Day is my day that I can And he out. understands we can't go out on our Arbor Day because we have our own program. Right. Right. But well, into the year. I mean, I there. really enjoyed having Lee here today. I feel like there are some connections we can be making with our fellow gateway cities, too, um, that maybe have gotten an influx of state funds, but still have a long way to go. Like, I don't know if any of those communities have vibrant tree commissions. I don't think they do. No. Chicopee, Springfield, Holyoke. So I feel like there's still a lot of, you know, yeah, and those are all environmental justice communities. They're really struggling economically. So, I, you know, it's all good. And, you know, west, south, whatever. I think there's still, there's so much cross-pollination that can be happening. Mm -hmm. There is. Um, and it's, I feel like you've got, you've got a little bit of a platform because you're Mastery Warden of the Year, and you might as well take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. You've got the props. Um, um, and so, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I just feel like there's a lot of exciting work. Yes, the only thing is, is now we have to convince the folks in Plainfield that we just can't plant all sugar maples. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's yeah, we that's that. what they want. That's, well, there are people there <laughs> so starting from that perspective. Uh, yeah. the folks. That's what they were doing. There was yes. a whole line of people oh, yeah. there, yes. Were, I I there. It's actually kind of startling when you go there. Yeah. There are these lines of yeah. trees. Many of them now, 800 were taken out this yeah. year. And 800. And wow. Then, and, and wow. Because they're... So, 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 the, so the, the, the long and the short is is that Eversource is their utility provider. 
So Eversource has a hazard tree mitigation program like National Grid, oh. and they identify public shade trees no that are going to impact their utility. Oh. But while they're there, by the way, this tree is definitely dead, but there's a tree over here that, you know, is probably going to die in five to ten years. So while we're here, yeah. we'll take it down for you because it's not going to cost you anything. And of course, oh. the town's like, well, you know, I, we, don't have, we don't have a tree crew, we don't have any funding, right. we don't have the ability to have a contract. Mm -hmm. yeah. Please take it down. So next thing you know, you know, 300 trees ends up now being 800 trees. Um, 800 trees. But, but even then, if you, if you drive by, there's just like all the even after the 800s, there's like zillions of trees with most of the limbs kind of falling. Yeah, out. yeah. It, it yeah. Looks, and, and they only have 600 people, and they have miles of roads and mm -hmm. miles of mm -hmm. roads. They have a yeah, yeah. But uphill battle. Yeah, yeah. Yes, funding the purchase of their trees. Uh, I think it's all coming from donations. They're actually going to, uh, they're also soliciting donations to buy a um, ESRI or GIS layer uh, to add to their existing GIS mapping system for the town so they can actually start to do an inventory. So they are, they're starting on the, you know, I mean, it's definitely a totally different political climate. Um, and I'm just there to support them. Well, and kind of zero budget. And zero budget, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's, it's really so different. And only 800 yeah. people. So even if 10% yeah. of the people came from me, just, you know, right. or 600 yeah. people. But I mean, these folks are really passionate because they see that their street trees are disappearing and yeah. they feel as if they don't have any control. And, yeah. uh, you know, they're also in need of uh, their tree warden is a selectman and he's a very knowledgeable person, a very nice person. But I think he's not, he's not, doesn't want, doesn't want to do that tree warden aspect of that job because it's his own job doing yeah. something else. Mm -hmm. So I think they're going to be in need of some kind of a tree warden of some sort. So anyways, that's the long and okay. short of it. But right. It's interesting. That's it's all great. interesting. Okay, so have we wrapped up with, uh, let's see, uh, Arbor Day and Tree Northampton? Did you have anything further you wanted to report? Well, I'm um, thrilled about this. this. is something we've been talking about for a long mm -hmm. time. Thank you, Good job. Rich, for working with Alicia to really have something mm -hmm. on the ground mm -hmm. that we can leave with people mm -hmm. um, so they can reflect on it. Pruning? Yeah. I mean, it's an incredibly important pamphlet because what happens yeah. is when we go to site visits, how do you cover all this? Yeah. You know, when you go talk to a homeowner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, have, I, don't, don't, I don't have a script, so now it's actually right. like, it's a right. script in a sense. Yeah. Something to leave them with. So the, the, I think that for volunteers, having this, and I also think that the setback program is incredibly important. And that, mm -hmm. um, you know, that this will help yeah. make it work we what, can, because it's hard. It's, what's the next step? We talked at one point about distributing these door door. What's the plan for that? So the the plan. This is the, if this if this would be the plan. Oh, but that was for this other sheet. But that talks about the setback tree planting program plus our neighborhood tree planting program. Oh, we, uh, we yeah. could discuss in a future meeting, Molly, about the po possibility of doing some targeted distribution in Ward 6. Yes, in yeah. Right. Well, we can just go door to door yeah. and just yeah. leave them. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you pick the street that you want the trees to be at, it, that's really a good idea because. Um, so that would be a task in the future to sort of yeah. peruse through yep. Ward 6 and sort of just see. Yep. What places might be Look for those good big locations? Lawns yeah. and those yeah. trees. Well, I know when when I'm out like with my little vest on doing site like when we you guys give us the addresses and I go out there and, and try and actually count the sites and assess the sites. I always get people that stop me and say, "What are you doing?" Yeah, you know. Yeah. And you know, so I could and people asking mm -hmm. about well, I have, you know. So I could say, "Oh, hey, you know." Right. Then another yeah. targeted area would be that part of Bridge Street that's beyond. Right. So, uh, yeah, we can't go can't there. Well, but, but, but Tree North Hampton well, can. Tree North Hampton yeah. can. Okay, so. so sounds like, you know what, let's get past Arbor Day. Yeah. Yeah. And then that could be yeah. our next, next project. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we're supposed to look at these and and yes, I would, yes, I would appreciate that. So yeah. I would appreciate feedback by the middle of next week, if possible. So let's say by. It's going to be Wednesday the 20th. Seventh or Thursday the twenty eighth, whatever. All right. So by it's not going to take Alicia much time Wednesday to make changes. But I have to once we've made effective changes and whatever you want to add to this card, then I need to get the ball rolling and actually send this to Paradise Copies. So we should all be assigned to take another look at this. 
Yes. Yes. Yep. Deadline. Think Wednesday, about it. Three twenty-three. And yes, sir. You'll, you'll make this available to the volunteers. You can then hand it out as they're working. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he's yeah, going to yeah. put these on his own printer, so yeah. that he can. It's something change. that. Yeah. If we did have to change it, we could. If we need ten more. Party, or no. Twenty yeah, more. Yeah. Party, yeah. yeah. Um, Rich, yes. uh, one more thing uh, with regard to Arbor Day. Are we going to have a few um, lawn signs regarding mulching? I have not had, I don't have, I haven't been able to deal with Marcus printing. Okay. I will try, I will try to email him tomorrow. I apologize. That's okay. I mean, we have a lot for Arbor Day. So if you want to lose something, uh, you know, you can, you can articulate that. Yeah, I thought we were going to put it aside for maybe I misunderstood. Put no. it aside for a, like a whole push. You want to like a focus push on that, whereas Arbor Day is all these different things. Well, we well can. that's not what we discussed, but we can, we can certainly oh. obtain that. We can remember also we had talked about doing some uh, demonstration planters in Fountain City. Oh, I mean, it's a possibility that something like, um, I don't know if we can do this, but just like at the Three County Fair, you know, we could have a table inside the farm building and have the brochures and have a volcano mulch demonstration and get volunteers to sit there, you know? I mean, it's, I don't know if we can do that heavy of a lift, but that's another kind of opportunity and that's a kind of an off time. We, you know? we could, but one of the things I'd have to say is that I, we have to try to capture this market that does volcano mulching. Mm -hmm. And we have to, it's, it's almost, uh, uh, for better word, better use of the word, the demographic. Mm -hmm. So it's businesses mm -hmm. that don't do their own landscape. Right. Right. It's people that don't do their own lawn, yeah. don't yeah, lawn yeah. care. Yeah. Um, the average person that uh, you know does not normally do volcano mulch. They don't mulch at all. Mm -hmm. So I, that's I think, a good point. I think point. I think targeting. We got to we've got to target. We've got to target again landscapers, yeah. tree care companies, yeah. um, and we also have to target probably some of the larger. Um, for example, like like Col like Colvest, like we should send a letter to Colvest. Colvest owns that whole. Oh, like the management company. Yes, because oh, they yeah. they own all of that, oh, and they're right. the ones that contract, right. and right. they just pay every month to a contractor take care of my lawn. Right. And and the lawn happens to have the Bay State Medical Building over there. It has to the right. Greenfield Savings Bank. The Lea Group has some. I mean. Good examples, the lead group spent all that time having somebody top those trees. Well, they did themselves a huge disservice because instead of the trees actually growing up and you're yeah, limbing up the trees, and yep. you can see the vehicles, now yep. you're looking at nothing but a bush. Yep. Yep. So, yep. like those yep. kind of things, if we can target those individuals, mm -hmm. I, you know, targeting individual homeowners with yeah, you know, candle mulches saying. is yeah, good, yeah. Yeah. but I think it, it's bigger. Okay, yeah, yeah. so that goes back to our original thought about sending letters and handwriting a little note at the top saying, hey, we've got this, you know, check out this really important information about mulch milk or planting trees. Yeah. Um, well, not, not so much planting trees, we're, but we're targeting the volcano mulch. Volcano mulch, that's yeah. the biggest. Yeah, but they might, if you say that, they might not know exactly what you're even talking about. You can have a picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, even over it. We like have those condos. We, have, we right already here. have those doorknobs. We do. So we can insert those. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yep, they do. Totally yeah. Totally yeah. 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 Time we could. I mean, it's just going to be. It's just going to be a. I'll make a bunch of however many copies you need. All right. And I can bring them to the meeting. Super. Or I could ask okay. Beth to make the copies and she can bring them to yep. the meeting. What was that? I could ask Beth to help me out with that. <laughs> oh. Right. Hmm. They're not going to call in sick that day, are you? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, on the seventeenth, I'll remind you um, to, to please bring the door knockers as well because we'll okay. insert those because that's the visual that folks okay. really need. So then I'll need well, to have we'll the, the letters done yeah. so I can do the mail merge with Karen and get that all squared away. Yeah. So I can have the envelopes and we can uh, maybe even stuff envelopes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Jen. I interrupted you. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I All right. Are, um, are we ready to move on? I, I believe so. I think we're at to do's then. 
Uh, any other business? Any other any business? Other business? Yes, yes, there is. Um, I wanted to report on my task, which was to um, kind of the native versus non-native trees in that list. And there were 9,607 trees altogether, and 65% were native. Wait, wow. say that again? 65% wow. were native. And, and I define native as, I didn't do it strictly just by east of the Mississippi, but I excluded ones that were really pretty far south. Like anything that was like Maryland south, I didn't count. But I did include ones that are um, like Delaware, southern Pennsylvania, southern New York. I included those as native. So um, there were 65% native, 23% non-native, and 12% that were, you couldn't tell because it didn't give the genus. Mostly because they were just, I didn't give the species, it just said the genus. Total number of trees? Nine? Nine thousand six hundred and seven. And these seven. are, um, these were all the ones that were in the tree keeper inventory from the original. My understanding is right. They were all the trees that were in the original survey that the yeah. company did. So a little bit old, I mean, From the yeah. original survey. Right. Okay. It doesn't include all the ones that we've planted since then. Just the original. Did you look at this? So you didn't look at the spreadsheet that um, of all the trees that have been planted. No, I have not. That would be interesting. Too. Um, some of them are mixed. Good. Because Rick yeah. did put a, a few got into the tree keeper before that spreadsheet got to oh. yeah, the other thing too is that uh, I have a, there's a lot of work orders because of the change of uh, there's a whole bunch of work orders that have to be closed with a bunch of removals, but that only really amounts to probably. Uh, Maybe 150 to 200. And I also I did not take out. If there were some like species where almost everything in that species was a dead tree, so I, I took those out. Yeah. But it does include dead trees too. Yeah. I, I didn't sort out. Okay. Well, uh, it's yeah. a good broad yeah. indicator of where we are. I mean, yeah. That's pretty good though. 65 percent. Well, I mean, it bad. means that it's not. I mean. Uh, this is Marilyn, you weren't here, yep. but this is coming out of a, uh, our presentation. We, had, we um, three of us, attended at UMass in which the bottom line, and it's a very distilled, very crude bottom line, but the bottom line is that our community should have no more than 30% non-native species in order to support the insect population which supports a bird population. 30% of woody plants. Woody. All around. Not, so it's not just the tree belt, it's right. the all around woody plants. Yeah. yeah. Very crude. Yeah. It's a crude yeah. sort of goal to, yeah. to shoot for. Right. But yeah. so what this tells us is just trees in isolation, where we were several years ago, we're not quite there. Mm -hmm. in, in, um, in the study that Lily's referencing, she defined trees as everything east of the Mississippi. Really. Native. 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 Yeah. Native. Yeah. So she so, would go further south further than south. Molly did. And, she and go also, all the way. Um, it, I looked really quickly at it because I didn't notice it until this afternoon. I know, I just finished it before. But I, I did see ahead. that <laughs> almost half of the non natives, or some giant number, are um, Norway natives. Yes, a lot. Yeah. That's what I'm So wondering. essentially, we have, a, you can frame it another way, we got a lot of trees we don't want really. Well, another one in that category <laughs> is um, the other? black locust are in the native cat. I put them in native yep. because. They are native from Pennsylvania South. However, they're considered invasive here, so maybe I should actually be putting them in non-native. And there were a lot of those. Right. See, I would. Is I it, would. Is I that would, on the invasive species list? Um, I think yes. so. Yeah. I would accept yeah. everything from the South because if that's what our forest is going to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, there's no. It's pretty soon, and when we plant a tree, right. that's what's what. What they. But have we don't know if the are the insects going to move north with the trees. I assume. Yeah. I mean, I assume yeah. that everything in, in North Carolina will be here. It's a matter of whether they're going to move at the same rate, you know, yeah. like whether there'll be a... I mean, because if the insects are a little bit delayed, you can suddenly have a bird collapse. You know, I look at it from a negative point of view. Yeah, the insects that destroy right. those trees are going to come here. Right, but the whole, yeah, the whole purpose of looking at this was in order for bird food, right. like insects for birds. But then, but then I, I, after we spoke, can we... But look at the apple, which were non-native. Right. And I go, well, right. wait a minute, all those, all those apples, trees that we plant, you can look at it, well, that's non-native, let's go. But in the spring, those the apples we plant retain their, their, the apples. 
through the winter. In the spring, they're key food for all the migrating birds. So right, I know. So that was another one that I put in non-native. Again, so. we're extrapolating a fairly narrow research um, study, which was yes. about insect eating leaves. Birds. Was, no, it was really about oh. the insects feeding oh, oh, on the oh, oh, leaves oh. of the trees. Oh. Because fruit, fruit directly feeds birds. Right. But we're talking about insects that feed on the leaves, and then birds that feed on the insects that feed right. on the leaves. Right. right. So, not a perfect thing. Caterpillar. Yeah, caterpillar. Specifically caterpillars. Yeah. Well, that's what the chickpeas, chickadees like. It was yeah. caterpillars on trees and then chickadees that's specific. feeding the caterpillars. Right. 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 So, yeah, it's, it was a good study. So yeah. said. What? Yeah. yeah. So, so, so we should just look at the numbers as extremely rough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but it's certainly as a, a, a general guide that we can be moving toward, mm -hmm. which is... Right. Just keep it Plants in mind. are trees that grow in the eastern seaboard. Right. I think that's it's always good to look at, um, if you look at the different plants on our plant list and how many, what variety of species each one supports. And some of the real tough old London pine trees support one thing. Whereas, you know, your sweet gums and lots of the others, they support this big long list of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, so this list that I made up, um, it could be a useful reference in terms of just referring to if you want to find out if a tree is native or not native, you can look at this list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, can you share it with us? It's on an Excel sheet. Is it okay to share it with the tree commission? It's fine. Okay, because it came from your... In the nine trees, 607 trees are from what inventory? That was from the tree keeper original survey. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah the was, day you did. It was like a the year... Did, yeah. Yeah. A year, so we had already changed some data because it was like a year later. Okay. Or, or, or like, mm -hmm. It existed and then it went on for a little while and then Rich right. created an Excel sheet. Right. Can you put it on a Google spreadsheet? Yeah, I think you can. Can you just take an Excel and make it into a Google somehow? Oh, yes. Yeah, you just say, copy just copy and paste it. <coughs> Open as. You know Even so, if you have different sheets, you have to copy and paste each sheet? I don't no, know. What no, I, I think, 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 think you can just upload the whole thing. Upload it yeah, upload as it. a Google yeah. Docs? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, well, thank you for doing that. That was rapid speed turnaround. It wasn't wow. done so fast. How did it, take? <laughs> it took about two or three hours. Wow, to do nine thousand trees. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, I went through and um, I just like would look up this tree on Google, and the Missouri Botanic Garden would pop up, and it would just say where it was native to, and yeah. I would just cut and paste onto a different sheet. Wow. Right. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right. Any any other? And by the way, Molly, when there's a topic like that that is a real agenda item? Mm -hmm. Let me know. Let me know. Have time. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to put that kind of thing on the agenda. Okay. Um, any other? Any other business? Okay. Uh, we're on to do's. Uh, I, I'm happy to start. Let's see. What am I going to do? Rich, I'm reminding you to maybe um, nudge Karen about the um, the map, finalizing the map. In your I'm going to send edits to Rich's document by 327, as we all are. I'm going to resend Lee the link to the EMA so we can look at uh, the gas leaks in his community. And when I find, and I'm going to invite him to a future presentation about gas leaks. I am going to invite Rick, Chris, Rick Harper, Molly Freilisher, and Christina um, Bazanson to the April 3rd commission meeting in which two degrees is going to join us. What are you reminding Rich to do? Um, no, Jacaron, uh, Nelson, about finalizing the brochure for Tuesday. Oh, yeah. That's it for me. Um, I'm going to make that Excel sheet into the Google Doc and send it out to you all and uh, look over the brochures and that's it. Can you put on your longer term list to get the data from the trees that have been planted in the last few years mm -hmm. and see what the native non-native breakdown is? All right, do you want those, that separate data from the first group or combine it all together? I mean, maybe both. Start off with separate just so we can see how we've done in the recent years and then integrate it with the larger. Yeah. It'd be easier to just combine it all together Rich said there's overlap. It would at least be easier to take the, the new years and combine those all together. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. 
Okay. Yeah. The New Year's, the, there aren't that many species, so it should be. Yeah. Probably right. 10 species. 15? Oh, really? 15? I don't know. Oh. I can't remember. Okay. So I mean, looking them up won't take as long. Yeah. Okay. Nope. Alright, in addition to reviewing the mailer and getting that to Rich by next Wednesday, I'm going to revise the landscape letter, get that to Rich by the end of next week, and also post a spreadsheet on Google Docs um, with all the landscaping companies, and then also start a list of management companies, which I might need some help with. I don't know. Right. I'm going to get ready for um, get more volunteers for Arbor Day and get the word out um, through broadcast emails and Facebook. That's it. Yep. That's all. all right. um, I was going to talk to Alicia about doing more, but she's been working so hard and now she's on vacation this week. So um, I don't know if we'll have a lot of giveaways done for her. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. And remember to review this and get it. Yes. Oh, yes. Everybody has to do that. <laughs> All of a sudden, <laughs> that's true. Are you it wasn't until I got here. Uh, tree pollen. Are you ready? Are you looking? See, you are. Oh no! <laughs> I am sometimes. I'm allergic to all kinds of things. Like, no one. I shouldn't have picked the job. I picked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see. I'm going to uh, make arrangements to meet with uh, the Julie and Rob at the YMCA. I'm going to follow up with the Housing Authority to find out exactly what's going on with the planting plan, uh, whether they accept it. Um, I'm going to work with Alicia on the trifold setback document and the advertising card after you give me your comments, please. I'm going to hold on to those. Uh, I'm going to purchase the gas meter or figure out how to purchase the gas meter. I'm going to nudge Karen about the uh, tree speak and also about the, the actual uh, form for this so we can actually get people to just apply for a setback tree, basically. Um, and then I'm going to wait for yes. Karen to the give letter. me the mailer, yeah. or to review the letter anyway, so that we can actually bring those to their next meeting and actually put some personal notes on them, yeah. which will also be a Karen, might be a little bit of a Karen nudge, too. I'm sure that I'm probably forgetting something. Uh, Adding watering to Oh, well, uh, yeah, I'll probably yeah, I was, I was okay. just hoping that somebody would just add uh, whatever comments they wanted and yeah. get watering it. I mean, I, so I, I guess I'm, does everyone like this idea? Yes. Yeah, I totally. do like the idea. I like yeah, the size. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I think I know. I know we maybe maybe we, I should have thought about what we I should have we should have had this discussion like a month ago, but. I mean, I'm just kind of finding that I don't feel like we're getting enough exposure. We're not getting exposure from the Gazette, per se, unless we actually call them up and say, can you please take a photo of us? Yeah. Um, we do get exposure uh, through the mayor's office, through social media, but I think this is for a much mm -hmm. directer way for to yeah. actually introduce ourselves to people that yeah. don't rely on social media, which mm -hmm. are probably a lot of older folks in Ward 6. So that's the other well, thing. Well, also the signs that you put up last year were great. Yeah. They, they were. Responses from those. They were. And, and then, the trees themselves. And Right. Visual inspiration. So, well, I think this card's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Did you yeah. contact the gas company? Well, uh, the Ali Ground Ones here? No, because I have not actually been getting a hold of the guy that was my inside contact. I will try Is there a link? Yeah, that's a great irony. Oh, were you at the last meeting? Yeah. Oh, well, there had, yeah, there had been, and, and Rich was going to follow up. Oh. Didn't their service may not be new to YMCA. Oh. So, okay. Well, Massasoit has a new name. It does, yeah. all the way to uh, Arlington Street, yes. Yeah. Cost them some big bucks. Yeah. Which is not Is it like water where the property owner is responsible for this? Mm -hmm. No, no, they, they go right to your house, right? Gas is responsible. Yeah, they go right to the house. Yep. Well, here, you know, the, the thing is that the gas companies are able to pass on the cost of gas leaks to ratepayers. 
Right. But they can't pass on the cost of making those repairs to the gas line, which is why oh. they don't make the repairs to the gas line. I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. If they could pass on the cost, they would do it. So it's, it's actually in their economic favor to let mm -hmm. gas leak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then they show up with 14 trucks and 17 fixed years, and we're their hero. Just like the power company right, shows up right. when the power goes out, all of a sudden they show up and there's 14 yeah. trucks and there's a tree down about this big, you know, and it's like, oh really? Well, we're here, we're here to restore your power, uh -huh. save you, to save your electricity. Yeah. So it's. No, uh, I want to see us start to hold them accountable for trees that they kill. This is where I think yeah. that they're going to start having a different attitude. Is when we, it, it is property. There is law that says that damage to property. Mm -hmm. and, and there are um, case, there are precedents where um, they have been held responsible for the cost of trees that have died um, from gas leaks. But the vast, 99.99% .99 of cases when this happens, they do not get held to, to pay for it. So I want to I put the heat on them. Yep. All right, so we were going around the circle, Rob. I think it would be worth with bricks to try and make sure we have sites established for, um, I mean, we'll have sites in any case for planting trees, but make sure this whole arbor day thing works out so we And you did mention you've been out pruning yeah. four or five days a week, and you're probably going to continue? Yeah, I think we're, we're, we'd like to continue through the end of the month. Um, yeah. The trees are beginning to bud, so um, we were out today, we were out yesterday. We'll we'll be out Saturday. Saturday. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the village will be finished. Mm -hmm. One village will yes. Project. We, yeah, you know, we, think, we think we're going to finish Village Hill. Um, it's a huge accomplishment. It's on the lace bar downs on King. Hmm? Yes, the lace that bar downs on King. Did you see those? Yeah, they were good. We did that Sunday. Yeah, that was huge. Yeah, that's we a lot of wood. You see what we took out of that? Yeah, that's huge, a lot of wood. Huge yeah. pile of wood. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, they were like a giant. Push. But you know, those lace bar downs, which look so beautiful, are directly under three shades of power, power yeah. lines. You know, yeah. I mean, the world. As we go back and prune trees that are 10 years old or 15, I mean, the world was a mess. The tree world was a mess. Yeah, yeah. And you really yeah. see it when you prune them. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like, how could this be? Where would the lace dog bark out? Uh, in front of where now Bay State has its medical clinic. Oh, the volcano oh. mulch trees? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, but they're also now um, growing vigorously under high, mm -hmm. high, high oh. tension power lines. Yeah. And they're big trees. Yeah. So it's just like oh, bad planning. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's continue around the circle and let's wrap up. Yes. Um, I will read this and give Rich feedback by the 27th. Uh, I'll check on uh, whether I can get uh, folding uh, access yeah. and at my job. And um, uh, are we supposed to review the landscapers letter? Or we aren't? Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to post it on Google Drive okay. and then share it. Perfect. Yep. I'll do that too. Thank you. All right. Motion to adjourn the meeting. I motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.